My name is Nadia Chilias and I am the President and Chair of the Board of the Samaritan Red Cross. Thank you for taking the time to tune in to our mini-series of our first Aid Save the Life campaign. The fact that you took some time out to watch means that you really care a whole lot about saving someone's life and even your own. For the first time ever on Samaritan, the Samaritan Red Cross will be showcasing a live production broadcast about first aid assistance and the importance of why it is an added value skill for your life. Whether it's a hurricane, a car accident, or a home emergency, you may be the one person to save your neighbor, a family member, or even a stranger's life. As a worldwide recognized first responder for first aid, we will be sharing valuable tips with some simple techniques that could be a difference between life and death for someone's existence. This is a limited series for the month of September and October, so do look out for the dates where you can tune in live on YouTube or Facebook, or you can register on the link below to participate in person in one of our live demonstration events. This is where you can also get it certified and receive a certificate from the American University of the Caribbean School of Medicine for their Stop the Bleed campaign. See you there. When, the place, when they are in a place of danger, once they are safe, you put on your gloves, evaluate the victim condition, and perform first aid. How do we evaluate the victim condition? It's important that we know what's wrong with the victim before performing first aid. We don't want to make matters worse. How do you do that? You tap the victim on their shoulder and shout with a loud voice, Sir, Madam, Sir, Madam, are you okay? Are you okay? The person can respond and the person cannot respond. If the person respond, is responsive, you introduce yourself and ask permission to help. If permission is given to you, you do a head-to-toe examination on the person as you continue to talk to the person and ask questions to find out what happened and how they are feeling. If the person is not responsive, you check for breathing for no more than 10 seconds. Ask a bystander to call the emergency service, the ambulance, message 912, giving them the correct condition of the person and asking them as well to return to let you know what the ambulance department said. It's important that the bystanders inform you about their conversation with the emergency services so that you know where they are, if they're coming, what time they will be there. Ask them as well to bring an AED and a first aid kit if there's any available. If there's no bystanders, you dial the emergency service on your phone and put it on speaker so that you can listen to the instruction of the dispatcher and continue working with the victim. How do we check for breathing. We check for breathing by doing a chin lift, head tilt to open the airway. You're looking for rising and falling of the chest, listening to any sound that might be coming from the victim, and you feel for breath on your face, cheek, coming from the victim's mouth or nose. The LLF, look, listen, and feel. If the person is unconscious and breathing, you then put the victim in the recovery position. I will give you a demonstration of the unseen safety, how to evaluate the victim condition, alert emergency, and perform first aid on a person that is unconscious, is breathing, and has no other life-threatening conditions. I will now give you a demonstration what I just explained to you. Exactly what do you have to do 
and then put the victim, the person, in a recovery position. What do I do? I'm at the Red Cross building, and I'm seeing, I just arrived, I'm seeing someone on the floor, lying there. I don't know what happened. I have to check the person condition. How do I check the person condition? First, I have to check for my safety first. I check to see if there's anything, whether it's fire, whether it's uh, lying, electrical cords on the ground, anything that could harm me or the victim. In this situation, the scene is safe. The scene is safe, what do I do? I then grab for my gloves. I put on my gloves. And I approach the victim. I approach the victim to check the person condition by tapping the victim on the shoulder. Hello, hello. Are you okay, ma'am? Are you okay? Are you okay, ma'am? Are you okay? There is no response. The person is unconscious. What do I do next? The person is unconscious. You check for breathing. You do a chin, a chin lift. Head tilt position, and you check for no more than 10 seconds, you check for breathing. This victim is breathing, unconscious and breathing. What do you do next? Can you call emergency services 912? Letting them know we have a victim at a Red Cross building. The person is unconscious and is breathing. Bring me the AAD kit and the first aid kit when you're coming. Thank you. I give the person, the bystander, the assignment to go and ask and call the ambulance department while I continue working on the victim. So if a victim is, is breathing and is unconscious, what do we do? We put them in the recovery position. How do we do that? The hanger is closer to you. You put it a 90 degree. The other, the other arm you put against the victim face on this side. And this arm will support the head of the victim when I turn the victim because we have to be careful and when we are turning the victim, that it don't hurt, uh, that they don't hurt their head. So it's very important to support the head. You grab the person's knee, and then once the leg is up, you hold the person's leg, and you turn the person towards you. You turn the person towards you. Make sure that the hand stays under the, the cheek, the elbow is flat, and you have to make sure that you open the airway and make sure it remains open. So if the person vomits, that it don't choke in its own vomit. So you always have to make sure that the airway remains open. You then anchor the person's leg so that the person don't roll over. So you have to make sure that it's uh, stabilized properly. Once you do that, you check for breathing by putting one hand in the back of the victim's back and one in the chest, and you check for breathing no more than 10 seconds. And every minute, you check for breathing until the ambulance personnel arrive. You keep monitoring the victim. You never leave the victim alone because anything can happen. So you just continue monitoring. Yes, that's the recovery position. Now, I'm going to ask the victim to go back over on your back. Thank you. And I'm going to ask you, the audience, to help me now to do the same thing. But I would like to hear from you, what do I do? 
right? I am at the Red Cross building, arriving at the Red Cross building. There's someone on the floor. What is the first thing do I have to do? Step on the shoulders and not say that. The first thing I have to do? You have to look for the area, any target around. Yeah. Um, place the check for anything. Look for the security. After you go to the victim, touch the shoulder. Call her. Good. Um, We're going step by step. The, safe, the safety of yourself and the victim is very, very, very important. Sometimes when there is an accident or something out there, you see everybody running, going to help, but they're not checking their own safety first. Your safety first is very, very important. So once the scene is safe, then you approach the victim to check their condition. So once you approach the victim to check their condition, what do you do after that? Anybody can help? Grab your gloves. Put on your gloves. Grab your gloves. Put on your gloves. Good. And then after that? Check the condition. Check. Condition of the Tap the person. Very good. Ma'am, ma'am, are you OK, ma'am? Are you OK? Are you OK? There's no response. What do I do next? Check for breathing. Good. Check for, no, before checking for breathing, no? Open the air. Open the air. How do I, how, how do I do that? Open. You tell, you tell the chin. Yes. Tell the chin. Open the airway. And then I go down to the victim because I want to feel to see if there's any breath coming out of their nose and mouth. I'm, I'm looking at the falling and rising of the, the person's chest, and I'm also listening for sound, the LLF, right? For no more than how much seconds? Ten, Ten, seconds. Ten seconds, very good. In this case, this person is breathing, unconscious, but breathing. What do we do? Get somebody, get somebody to call. Yeah, you, you tell a person direct, you said, can you call 912 and ask to, to let them know that we have a victim that is, what do we tell the ambulance? Unconscious, Unconscious and? Breathing. And is breathing. And what else? And can you bring the AED? And the first aid kit. Very good. The first aid kit and the AED. So when he's coming, if there's any, he will bring it with him. While the person who is helping the victim can continue doing what they're doing, until the ambulance arrives. Yes? And what do I do next? Put him in a recovery position. OK, how do we start with the recovery position? This come, yes, 90 degree. Yes, and then after that? The other arm? The face, right? I just check, yeah, on the face. And you hold it there. And what do we do next? Lift the leg. And then? Turn them. I'm going to turn the victim. Facing me. Very good. Always because you have to keep looking at the victim at all times. So you're facing, turn the, the victim facing you. And then? The leg. Yes? And what I do up here by the head? Yes, I open the airway, make sure the elbow is flat on the ground so the person don't roll over. And why do I open the airway? Why do I make sure the airway is open? Very good. So in case the victim vomit, the, the victim don't get choked. What do I do after that? Check for breathing. How do I check for breathing? One hand on the back, one hand on the chest, and then I check for breathing for how, how long? Ten seconds. Ten seconds. Very good. And how often do I do this? Every minute. Every minute. Okay, some good students. Very good. <laughs> okay. So then you continue monitoring the victim until the ambulance arrives. 
if this victim stop breathing, and that we will teach you in our next episode. Thank you. Very good, guys. Very good. Good morning, everyone. I'm Esther Holly, and I'm the branch manager of Red Cross St. Martin. And I'd like to welcome everyone. I'm your host today. And um, we are so happy that you've joined us online and our invitees here. I hope you are enjoying it. Are you? Yes. Well, guess what? This is not um, the end. We have still more, lots and lots more programs coming your way. This is season one and episode one. This is, we are on the halfway mark. We are not stopping here. We will be doing, this is just a taste of what you're going to get. Join us. We're going to have in the coming weeks, we're going to have a link where you can register to get the whole, whole experience training and get certification to be a Red Cross first aid responder. So it will, con be, co it will be continued. Um, right now, we're going to be presenting AUC. They will be doing Stop the Bleed. And um, we want to remind you that next week we will be online again and we also have the opportunity to have our live, um, live show with invitees joining us. This will be at Red Cross Base next week, Saturday. So see you there and enjoy the second half of our episode. Thank you. Hope you all enjoyed our live viewing and learned some valuable first aid techniques. Thank you for watching and see you on the next video. Bye.